Hey Miata owners, I'm Daniel, and today we're gonna show you how to install the Carcepts front sway bar on your ND Miata. You're gonna see it's really not that bad of a job. I'm gonna show you how it's done right now. Carcepts makes a great aftermarket front sway bar for your 2016 and up Mazda Miata. You get to choose how thick of a bar you want for how stiff of a bar you want basically. And once you've picked that, you still get nine track side adjustable settings for your sway bar. And that makes it a really great option. But before I tell you more about this sway bar, how great it is and why you need to upgrade the sway bar on your Mazda Miata, maybe you already know why. So go ahead and feel free to skip to this time to get to the installation. I've also got jump links down in the description. When competing in autocross with your ND Miata, to be competitive, not only do you gotta become a better driver, but you should be upgrading your suspension a little bit to help the car handle better. And there are some upgrades that are definitely a must in street class, and the front sway bar is one of them. In street classes, you're allowed to upgrade one sway bar, and that is usually gonna be the front one. That's because when you tighten up the front end, it actually helps get the rear end more planted. Plus, the front sway bar on the stock Miata is so tiny and it allows for so much body roll. And when the body rolls over far, it's really hard to get it back the other way. So a tighter sway bar is gonna help you out in the slaloms and quick transitions. So the goal of the sway bar, or sometimes called anti-roll bar, is to connect the suspension on one side to the suspension on the other. So for example, in this picture of this old Grand Am I rented back in the day for autocross, you can see there's a lot of body roll. It's leaning hard. But as the right suspension compresses, the sway bar basically transmits that compression over to the other side and uses a lever action to sort of pull the body back down towards the other wheel instead of letting it rise up like this. Or you can think of it as the other and that is that it pulls the wheel up in the fender well so the car can stay flat. This is gonna help keep that center of gravity over the middle of the car and keep more balanced traction on all the wheels. Now, sometimes people have really tight sway bars and you might see them go around a corner and it starts to lift the wheel. And that's because they've gone beyond the limit of what the sway bar can do on keeping the car flat and the car just leans and keeps the wheels flat basically. Removing the front sway bar from your Mazda Miata can be a frustrating little dance of working it out underneath the car, and we honestly don't recommend it. The easiest thing is to just cut off one end and slide it on out. And that's what we're gonna show you here. We're gonna use an angle grinder or a Dremel to cut the bar, and then you just get rid of it. And I know you're thinking, but maybe I wanna put it back in. Well, first of all, you probably won't. But second of all, don't worry. Putting it back in is difficult, but if you really want to, they're only about 75 to $85 from Miazda. Miazda? From Mazda, so it's not really a big deal, but I really doubt you're gonna wanna put it back in. Okay, enough talking about the sway bar. Let me just show you how to install it. Here's your quick overview of the install. We'll first cut the stock sway bar. Then we'll unbolt both end links. We'll unbolt and pry off the center mounts, slide the old sway bar out, and slide the new sway bar in. We'll install the new center section mounts, bolt them down, and install the clamp collars to hold them in place. Install the sway bar arms, assemble and measure the new end links, and then install the end links, and you'll be done. Now to the details. For this installation, you'll need the following tools. You want a torque wrench capable of 60 foot-pounds and a smaller torque wrench for 11 foot-pounds, but if you don't have one, that's okay. You can just make a small guess. A long flathead screwdriver will be helpful, a ratchet, 9 16th inch socket, 14 millimeter socket, 3 8 inch hex, 3 16th inch hex, and if you don't have those in sockets, you might be able to get away with these hex keys. You want a 14 millimeter wrench. The ratcheting kind is really helpful a 9 16 inch wrench, and a 1 half inch wrench. Also not shown here is you'll want a tape measure or caliper to measure things. For this how-to, we're gonna be cutting off the sway bar, so you'll want some type of cutoff wheel. I suggest this $20 angle grinder from Harbor Freight Tools. It'll get the job done in less than a minute. Otherwise, if you use a Dremel tool, it could take about 10 minutes and a few cutoff wheels. Of course, you'll need a jack and jack stands to raise the vehicle. Before we get started, it's really important to measure the ride height at the front of the car. Be sure to measure the ride height on both sides as it may be different if your car is corner balanced. Measure the ride height from the center of the hub vertically to the fender lip. 
You can also measure from the bottom of the wheel rim and then subtract the radius of the rim. Either way, you're gonna get an accurate measurement so that you can refer to a chart later and we'll show you how to adjust the end links. Next, we need to raise the vehicle off the ground and put it safely on jack stands, and then we'll remove the front wheels. Be sure to place the jack at the front cross member properly so it doesn't slip off. If it does, you could cause some serious damage to other components under the engine. Once the car's off the ground and safely on jack stands, remove both front wheels. Let's take a look underneath. Here, the sway bar is marked in red. It runs behind the strut, and then it connects to this end link, which then attaches to the lower control arm. Although you can remove the sway bar by carefully removing it all intact, we find it way easier just to cut it and slide it out. So we're gonna show you how to do that. To protect your speed sensor wire from our metal cutoff wheel, we're gonna remove this 12 millimeter bolt and then hang the speed sensor wire a little higher up on the strut and spring assembly. This is only temporary while we cut the sway bar. We'll cut the sway bar right about here. Hold it, stop right there. Before you do this, make sure you are protected. You need to be wearing gloves and you should have a face shield and at the minimum, some eye protection. Some ear protection is also good. These cutoff wheels can shatter and cause some serious damage to you and your car. So take precautions. It's so quick and easy with one of these $20 well spent, even if you never use it again. Believe me, doing it with the Dremel is a little tedious. All right, now grab a 14 millimeter wrench and we need to loosen the end link from the lower control arm. This should just work like we did it here, but you may also need a hex bit in this spot here to hold the stud in place while you loosen the nut. Once that end link nut is removed, you can pull off the end link and here's the part that you cut off. Throw it in the trash. Here's the carnage. We need to remove this bracket here. It's held on by two 14 millimeter nuts. Once you get those off, we're gonna remove the metal bracket. With the nuts off, pry the metal bracket away from the rubber bushing with a long flat screwdriver. Don't worry about the bushing, it stays on the sway bar. Now go ahead and repeat this process for the left side. You don't need to cut the left side, but if you have any trouble pulling the sway bar out, you could do that as well. The upper bracket bolt on the driver's side, well, that's a pretty tight space, so I don't recommend using a ratcheting boxed in wrench as they are a little thicker and it could get jammed. If you can at least break the bolt loose, it will then of course unscrew and shorten the clearance some more as the bolt comes out. So once it's loose, hopefully you can just loosen it up completely with your fingers or maybe get some needle nose pliers in there like we did here. Eventually it'll come out, but it might take you a couple minutes. Once both nuts are out, remove the bracket and we'll remove the sway bar now. Optimally, the sway bar should just slide right out, but you do have those rubber bushings on there so they can get kind of hung up as well. It will be really helpful to take the wheel and turn the wheels to the left out of the way of the sway bar. That gives you a little more clearance. Just be patient, have a secondary person help you eyeball what's going on on the other side, and eventually it'll slide right out. Here's a straight shot of the tunnel that the sway bar was running through. Now let's install this center section mount. You wanna start with the passenger side first. Just mount it on the subframe, but no need to bolt it down quite yet. Now move over to the driver's side. You may be tempted to put in the other center section mount, but don't do that. We need to put the bar in first. Slide the bar in and work it all the way over to the passenger side. It's nice to have a friend help you, but if you're doing it solo, just lay on the ground and guide the bar over to the other center section mount. Try not to bang into the center section mount as it could put stress on the studs that it's attached to. Some gentle twisting will help get the bar to slide through the center section mount. Now install the driver's side mount and install the nuts, but don't tighten them down quite yet. 
By the way, if you took any notice, this is a used setup, so these aren't the fresh parts you'll get from Carceps. You see how the bar is protruding out of the mount here? We need to make sure it's even on both sides. The end of the bar should be about 2 and 5 eighths inches from the center section mount bushing. Go ahead and grab a caliper or just a tape measure and measure it out. If it's not quite 2 and 5 eighths inches, that's okay, just make sure it's absolutely even. Once you're satisfied with the position of the bar, you can go ahead and tighten down those nuts on the mount. These should be about 15 to 20 foot pounds. You don't want to over tighten them and you're not going to get a torque wrench in there, sorry. So you want to get some experience with that torque, try it on another nut and then figure out what it feels like with a wrench that you can fit in there. To secure the position of the bar, install the clamp collars on each side. They should be pressed right up against the mount bushings and torqued down to about 11 foot pounds or 132 inch pounds. Use a 3 16 hex bit socket. Now it's time to install the sway bar arms. They go on the splines of the bar. So let's put some anti-seize on the splines of the bar and then slide the arms over the bar splines. You'll know that the arms are properly positioned on the splines when there is about 1 16th of an inch of the splined bar protruding past the arms to the outside of the car. Wipe off the excess anti-seize and now we'll tighten down the arm using a 3 8 inch hex bit. The torque should be 60 foot-pounds, but if you have an earlier version of this bar, it's a 5 16 hex bit, and that one only needs to go to 45 foot-pounds. Now we'll do the same to the driver's side, but you can't just put it on in any old position. You need to create a mirror image of the two arms. In this case, we're making sure that the driver's side is horizontal because the passenger side is currently in a horizontal position. A good way to check is that when you hit them against the upper suspension control arm, they both tap it about the same time. You might need to pull it off and reinstall it a few times to get it properly clocked around the splines. Go ahead and torque down this arm to 60 foot-pounds or, if you have the earlier version, 45 foot-pounds. All right, we're almost done. Let's assemble and install the end links. They need to be assembled and installed properly for the quick adjustment feature of the sway bar. There are two end link halves. This one has the wrench flats on it. This needs to be on the top, as in the part that goes into the sway bar arm, while the other one that has a hex stud goes into the lower control arm. The end links come with two sets of threaded rods. It depends on your ride height which threaded rod you use, and that's why we measured the ride height earlier. So you'll use the shorter one if it's less than 13 and a half inches, and the longer one if it's more than that. Assemble the end link by installing one of the threaded rods into the end link halves, and then add a nut to lock it into place, but you don't have to tighten it up quite yet. Add a second nut before adding the second end link half. Remember, you need one with a wrench flat and the other one with a hex adjustment on it. Now that they're together, we can adjust them to the proper length. Refer to the chart in the instructions and adjust the threaded rod to a length that's appropriate based on the chart. For this end link, we measured the ride height to be 12 and a half inches. That means the end link needs to be set to four inches. And you measure this four inches from the center of the ball on one end link half to the center of the ball on the other end link half. Remember, if your car is corner balanced, one side may be different than the other, so make sure you adjust properly. Before tightening down the nuts to lock in the end link positions, make sure that they're pointed in the right directions. The top one with the wrench flats should be pointing towards the inside of the car for the side you're installing it on, while the lower section should be pointing aft towards the rear of the car. We're starting on the driver's side here. Take your new assembled end link and install it. Put the top section with the wrench flats into the sway bar arm in the appropriate slot that you'd like. You can start out at the softest setting if you like, but in this case, we're starting out with the second hole from the end. Choosing the holes closer to the pivot point of the bar will result in a tighter or higher rate on the sway bar. Install the 9 16 nut on the back of the top end link, but don't worry about torquing it down quite yet. Install the lower end of the end links through the front mounting hole 
of the lower control arm. Remember the factory sway bar mounted from the rear of this hole, but with the car step sway bar, you're gonna go through the front. Secure the lower mount of the end link with the 3 8 flange nut. You'll need a 9 16 socket, and then you'll need to hold the other side with a half inch open end wrench to keep the end link stud from spinning. Repeat this process on the other side of the car. On this car, the owner chose to go three holes back on the passenger side and two holes back on the driver's side. You don't have to use the same adjustment holes on each side. You can actually use a combination of two holes that are adjacent. So this gives you nine possible combinations of adjustment. You wanna tighten both of them down to about 29 foot pounds, but the upper one is a quick adjustment nut, so it's not really important that you get it right. You can't even fit a torque wrench up there anyway. Congrats, you're all done and your sway bar is ready to race with. Don't forget to reinstall the wheel speed sensor bolt, and then you can put the wheels back on the car. Torque the lug nuts to 80 to 108 foot pounds. We usually go about 85 foot pounds. Then lower the car down and take it for a little test drive. You may hear an initial clunk as the bar settles, but drive it for about 500 miles and then the end links should loosen up a bit and it'll be all set for the quick adjustment procedure that this sway bar system allows for. Be sure to check the instructions for how that procedure goes. Okay, that's it for installing the Carcep sway bar. I hope it encouraged you to be able to knock this out yourself. It's just not that hard with the right tools. So if you like this video, please show me, hit that like button, subscribe, and of course, consider hitting the bell to be notified of future videos. And be sure to comment below maybe with your tips on how you installed this sway bar. All right, thanks for watching the Jet Fuel Only channel. I'll see you next time.